Hello and welcome to another episode of the Shaver Ranch Plus Wolves. Today we have um, our old crosscut saws. We've had these in the family for quite a while and I've just now accumulated the proper amount of tools, the right tools for the job to perhaps try to restore these. And there would be an invaluable tool to have if uh, the crap hits the fan or, or any type of uh, homesteading where power tools may be uh, useless. So we got this one here, which has been, my parents bought this a long time back, and it's pretty rusty, but it, I think there's some potential. None of the teeth are chipped, they're not bent really bad or anything. Get that rust off, it's just surface rust. And look, we just need to find the fittings, that's going to be difficult. Now the one that's under it is the one that I bought in an antique shop locally here and it has the fittings. Luckily for me, these fittings are the same as the one that my parents bought a long time ago. I'm just going to have to try my best and find an antique shop that would carry these uh, fittings here. This is supposed to be a wing nut, <laughs> but I think it broke over the time. If we go over here, you can see there's still one paddle left. Obviously this one was quite heavily used still has the original handles, but I have a feeling I'm probably going to have to replace them. They are quite heavily damaged, as you can see. They're just chipped away really badly. The second one is a single man's uh, cross-cut saw, and it has the same pattern as the one that I bought. Basically, this one has two instead of three, but uh, I know from these old saw makers, they, they would make their teeth in, in almost like a trademark of uh, tooth making for their crosscut saws. So as you see, this one is different than this one. So, uh, this one is definitely going to need a new handle. I'm thinking now that I've got the tools I need, I'm going to try to make my own for this and use the original bolts that are in it. This could also be used as a two-man, and actually has a hardware, which is really nice. Man, look at that old square bolt. They don't make them like they used to. That's really cool. Nice piece of history. That handle's really nice. I'll just sand it and put some linseed oil on there. So those are my new projects. We've got uh, some uh, puck stones that I can use to make sure that I do this nice and careful, because you can't replace these. The, these aren't made anymore. And I'm just going to be real gentle and use a puck stone and get all that rust off of there and use um, probably steel wool for the teeth. Real careful, I've got to be very careful. And I don't have the skill set that I think is necessary to, to uh, do anything with these teeth or sharpen these teeth properly. I'll probably take it to a professional to, uh, to sharpen and, and set these teeth for all these saws. And then they'll be usable again. So that's it for that. Um, I did start this. This is an armor stand, and it's going to be more than just for my uh, tactical vest or, or armor. Um, it's going to be for any type of leg holsters or things like that. It's basically going to carry all of the things that I need. So if I needed to go out into a tactical situation, I would have everything there, and I could just take it off and put it on me. What I'm going to do is try my hand at a little, let me see if I can do this one hand, uh, timber framing. I'm just using a scrap wood I had in the garage because I can't really afford any wood at the moment. I'm going to join these two together because I kind of didn't have a plan when I started. I just started doing it. <laughs> and uh, we're going to cut the, ah, man, I don't know which is which, but mortise and tenon basically. I'm going to have a, a hole there. And I'm going to cut out right there the other part, female and male parts. I think I'm going to hang something in that. So yeah, nice and sturdy. It'll be, be a nice addition. I didn't bother sharing with you all the process of it because just uh, didn't have the time. Now, as I was talking in my last video, I've got a different method for for sharpening and setting grinds on axes now and that is a uh, courtesy of Wrangler Star. He uh, showed me and showed the world actually through his channel 
a really good way to get a good grind on your axes, at least to get the grind set, and then you can further polish and hone the blade with stones using a, I don't know if that's going to focus, but basically using this, and then you get a compass. You get a compass and put it on the on the edge here, and then you're going to go an eighth of an inch right there, and then the other side, and you're going to get your uh, pivot point, and then you scribe the pivot point with the with the compass on here, and scribe it out so that you get the proper um, shape, and then placing it on the belt sander. You can sit there and very carefully and very slowly uh, start setting it, and then you'll get the perfect, and it just so happens that that's about a 22 to 23 degree angle, so it's really great, and depending on the thickness of, hmm, I don't know all the terminology, but depending on the thickness of your bit, depends on what angle you're going to get, so you're going to get a, a steeper angle here, which is good because this needs to be more durable than say a felling axe or something like that so this is going to be the steeper angle it actually works out great i wish i knew all the terminology but i just don't don't know so i think that'll be all for this video i will see you next time and if you enjoy what you see please like and share these videos with everyone you know and don't forget to su subscribe and have a great day